Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Angelo Farrow, and I manage developer relations for Unity Analytics. And to my right is the lovely Carl. He is the global leader of evangelism. He's America's director, and he's also a part-time model slash actor. <laughs> and today, we're here to tell you about Unity Analytics. So what is Unity Analytics? Unity Analytics is a tool to help Unity developers build great games. Um, I've only been with Unity for a little over a year now, and in that year I've had an opportunity to talk with over 100 Unity developers. And in my conversations with developers, I found out that you guys are very committed, you're artistic, you're creative, and you're dedicated towards building the great, building really truly awesome and great games. Which got me thinking, um, what makes a great game? Is it having really cool character designs that makes a great game? Is it having a really clever and unique level designs that makes a great game? Or is it really building a beautiful and immersive world that makes a great game? You could ask this same question to 1,000 developers, and chances are you'll come up with 1,000 different answers. Um, but one thing that's clear and one thing that's certain is that all the elements and all the little pieces and building blocks that go into building a great game require, development, require developer time. So a lot of times, as developers, you're always asking yourselves, how do you maximize your time? How will you spend your time? It's a precious resource. It's a precious commodity. How are you going to spend it? So do you spend your time integrating analytics, or do you use that time to design a new dungeon level? Are you going to integrate analytics, or are you going to improve your game tutorial, or maybe create a new raid event? How do you spend and how do you choose? How do you maximize your time? Well, the good news is you don't have to choose. With Unity Analytics, we've built, hands down, the easiest integration possible for any analytics suite out there. For Unity games built in Unity 4.x or Unity 4.5 or 5.0, um, integration is with an SDK. It's super duper easy. Um, in fact, it's been kind of like a favorite amongst our current beta testers. And the good news is, is that it's only going to get easier. In 5.1, we're debuting a native engine integration. And in just a few minutes, we'll show you how easy the integration is. So not only are we going to save you time um, by making sure that you don't have to spend so much time integrating, you can spend more time building great games, we're also going to make sure that the time you spend with the Unity Analytics is worthwhile. And so I always say that this dashboard is built for the Unity community, and that's what it is. Uh, when we first launched, the feedback from the community was that you guys wanted to be able to track custom events, and you wanted to be able to easily visualize them and analyze them. And so our team listened, and that's what we prioritized. So we built a super flexible system that lets you track the data points, the custom events, the um, events and the data points that matter most to you, so you can easily analyze and visualize those data points. And so before we dive into the tech demo and show you how easy it is to use and integrate, I want to go over a couple examples of how developers are currently using Unity Analytics to build really great games. So this game is called Corgi Run. Now, Corgi Run is a really cute um, runner game that's being developed by BitEgg Inc. BitEgg Inc. is an indie studio based in California. And right now, um, they're in soft launch. They're targeting iOS. So the BitEgg, Inc., BitEgg team, uh, when they first beta tested, they found out they were having really low day run retention. What that means is that players were joining one day, and they just weren't coming back the next day. And so with analytics, what they did is they used Unity Analytics Funnel Analyzer feature. And what a funnel does, it allows you to pinpoint where exactly in your game your players are dropping off. And so here's a screenshot from their funnel. And as you can see, there's a pretty big drop off between the first two funnel steps, between step one and step two. So with this insight, the Corgi Run team decided to really drill down and see what was going on and see if they could figure out why these people were dropping off. And so this is a screenshot um, showing you the world map. Now this is the very first um, scene that a player gets dropped off on. So this is the first scene that a player plays, and being on this scene triggers the first funnel step. The next funnel step is triggered when the player taps on those gold coins. And so what they found out is that even though there's text telling you to tap and start the mission, and there's an arrow pointing to you to start the mission, about 30% of their players were never tapping on the gold coins. So they never started the first mission. They never started playing the game. To them, Corgi Run is a game where you wander around a world map, and you don't really do anything. So they made a couple of changes, and this is what the updated world map looks like today. And as you can see, the biggest change that they made is that they restricted the player movement. Whereas before you could wander around and click on anywhere, now the player is forced to click on the gold coins in order to start the first mission. And this is the results they've seen as a result of making that small change. So this is the updated funnel analyzer, and right now we're focusing on just the first two steps. And that green bar represents basically the difference in conversion that they were able to achieve by making that slight game, uh, game decision or gameplay uh, difference. 
And so whereas before they had about a 70% conversion, now they have closer to 98, 99% conversion. So this goes to show you how small um, details like changing the, making it so players can't wander around the map can lead to really big impacts and really big changes in increasing your player's engagement and overall retention. The next example I want to go over is a game called Ultra Flow. Now, Ultra Flow is a really fun puzzle game. It has 99 levels. And the object of the game is that you want to swipe the ball so that it bounces off the obstacles. You have a limited number of bounces. And your goal is to try to get the ball into um, that large ring. And so the game is developed by Ultra Team. Ultra Team is a group of five students. They are based in France. This is their very first game and their very first experience using analytics. So just like the Bit Egg team, what UltraFlow did was they used Funnel Analyzer to kind of track where players were dropping off. And so this is a screenshot of an early UltraFlow level um, where players were dropping off at a really high rate. And so this screenshot shows you what that level looked at originally. And then this next screenshot shows you um, the slight changes that they made in order to get more players through this level. So they're really small, subtle changes. By adding an extra bounce and making those two hexagons just a little bit smaller, they're able to achieve a 20% increasing rate on just this level alone. So this, again, is showing you how these developers are using Unity Analytics to find out where the problem points are in the game, and then making really small and easy design changes and tweaks in order to increase your player engagement, increase um, the completion rate, and increase kind of the player happiness. And so UltraFlow, um, shortly after they made these level changes, they got picked up and they hit the jackpot and they were featured by Google Play and by iTunes. So their DAU, which was about a couple hundred when they first started, soared to tens of thousands. And Unity Analytics was there throughout this whole explosive growth, throughout this really huge spurt, um, to help them understand the player behaviors, help them make sense of all that data, and ultimately understand the player behavior of over 2 million plus players. Um, now, this last example I'm going to go over is about a desktop game called Rust. Um, it's currently in early access, and it's developed by Face Punch Studios. Uh, it's available on Steam, so you guys should definitely check it out. Um, UltraFlow is also available on iOS and Android. You guys should definitely check that out as well. And so whereas the last previous two examples were looking at how developers were using Unity Analytics to really see how players were engaging with their game, um, the developers at Rust use Unity Analytics in order to track performance metrics. So this is a screenshot showing how they use our flexible custom events implementation to track performance metrics like rendering, cycle, and frame rate. And with that information, they were able to easily visualize how changes they made in the gameplay could affect uh, performance metrics like frame rate. And the reason why I wanted to highlight this example is it goes to show you how we've developed such a flexible system um, of capturing custom events that you can really capture the data points that matter most to you, whether it's looking at where your players are dropping off, who's spending, who's leaving, or how you can best optimize your game in order to kind of um, make sure that it's performing optimally. So th those are just a few examples of how developers are using Unity Analytics in order to build great games. Um, since we've been in open beta, we have been in, uh, uh, adopted by over 4,000 developers. We're over 1,500 live games. And on a daily basis, we analyze about 23 million daily events. And so what are you guys waiting for? If you guys aren't part of the beta, you can join now. Uh, you can sign up at analytics.unity3d.com. And our target launch date is officially in Unity 5.2. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to the lovely Carl, who's going to show you how easy it is to integrate and use analytics. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Carl. Uh, for the people from Belgium, I'm Karel Kalawart. Um, so there will be no subtitles, because people from Netherlands understand that when I speak. They put subtitles normally. But so what I'm going to do, I'm going to really pure technical integration. We just learned how, why you should use uh, analytics in a game. Well, let's see how technical it works. And let me go here to Unity. Well, first, the question. Uh, who here in this audience is, is already using analytics in Unity? Raise your hand. OK, only a little few. You should, you should do it. Uh, <clears throat> who came here to Unite pure because he wants to be in, uh, doing uh, analytics? Only a few, yeah, because you want to make games. And that's what you should focus on. Uh, it should be super easy, click a button, and that's basically it. So you get your data, and you can work on your game and not be nonstop uh, coding on analytics. So but let's look, have a quick look here at, it, at this little game I have here. And uh, let's play the game. So it's a little character. It's modeled after myself. And uh, we have to collect fuel cans. Oh, and when I die, of course, I can uh, play the game again. 
But what we want to do is uh, we want to track basically first the basic analytics. We want to understand how many daily players we have and how many monthly players we have. So we want to integrate that. Later on, we want to do more custom events. We want to track how many few cans on each level my character picks up. All right, what we have here in the scene, in the Unity game here, we have three scenes. We have a start level, and where we play the game and we start. We want to see how many people actually go from start to play in the game. And then we have level one and level two. Uh, level two is a bit more difficult. I want to see how many people actually go from level one to level two. So there's three things we're going to cover. One is basic and integration, and understanding our daily players. Advanced, how many cans our character picks up. We want to see, we want to see if we can optimize the gameplay for that. And then, which level is too difficult? Where is the drop off? Too much. Okay. So first thing you go, and you go to the dashboard of Unity Analytics. Okay. You go to projects, and you click hey, add a new project. Super simple. Add a new project, and you pick your version you want. Uh, here we're going to do 5.1, the latest version on the market. We can give it a name. Uh, Amsterdam has a lot of fun. Okay, and we're going to—it's uh, not directed to children. Safe. Give it a second, and then uh, it shows you how exactly how to do it. You can read that. I didn't read it because it's too simple. You can just click next, and nobody reads the manual. And then it says copy paste. So you use that ID, you copy that, and you go to Unity, and you go to here in the uh, project in the player, and here you copy paste the ID in there. Your basic integration is almost done. There's one more button to click. Uh, save. Okay. <laughs> click next. And now we can test it, validate everything. So we press play here. Okay. And they're going to play the game. Give me a few hours. Okay. And then uh, at a certain point, you can actually see here in our browser, it is updating and, and, and catching, fetching the information. Okay. This is the basic integration. So I click next. And then we can do more advanced integration. Hey, here, monetization. Click Next. We could do the testing. We have also hey, the custom events. That's what you want. And it's really cool done, because in my background, I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmer. But when I looked at here, there's nicely examples done, example codes. I copy paste that in my game here. So we wanted to know when the character, like each level when I die, how many cans the character has uh, picked up. Okay. So let's look, go to the character here. And I added a little script to it. In the script is die. Okay. Let's open the die script here. Okay. And in here, we have uh, the zoom is not working here, but it's not a problem. So we added in the script here analytics custom event. We're going to store it a uh, and game over, how many cans I actually picked up. So super simple to add. Copy paste the script, and you can add, you can add of course, um, more uh, values and information you want to store in there. And don't forget on the top uh, here to add Unity Engine Analytics. That's so simple you can do to custom events. So now let's look, uh, check if it works. Let's play. Yeah. I'm going to pick up a can here. Then pick, forgot it. Pick up this one. Okay, that's this. Okay, let's stop. And let's look at the dashboard here. Oh, next. I should uh, have done next first. Okay. So let's do it again. So here is the, uh, hey, we're going to validate it. Okay. So here in Unity. So you can test it nicely in the editor. And that's really cool. You don't have to do a build in order to test it. Okay. Ah. Play again. So let's jump. Okay. And when the fetching of the data works, you're going to see all the information coming in. Oh. I died each time when the fetching happened. Okay. Okay. And let's jump. OK, 
Okay, I need to play my game more. Okay, but anyway, you would then see here the, the, the stamp coming up of how many cans you picked up. Right? So you can see that data. And next, next. And then we have also the, uh, the funnel analyzer. But I said, so the basic integration was done and the, and the, um, the information of the custom events. So you can then here go to your metrics monitor. Okay, and then you get the data. But of course, yeah, we just created that here, this project. Okay. But when you go, like, I have the project like uh, the same game that I made early on. And we can go to here, jump. Okay. Jumper game. And here you can actually uh, generate right away your graphs if you play it. Uh, you can actually zoom in and the graphs too if you want. Okay, and then, okay. You can look at your uh, active players, your sessions, your attention, uh, your revenue, all the basic things are there. And then you can actually uh, go to your. Um, okay, where is my. Uh, here, the funnel analyzer. And that's what we're going to integrate now. Okay. So basically, what you want to do in this game, we want to know how many people actually go from scene one to scene two to scene three. Okay. Here are my build options, my build settings. Okay. I'm going to add my scene to it, like level two. So my start scene is zero, my level one is, zero, is one, and level two is two. Uh, you can, uh, in this, of course, in the APIs and then the thing, you can use the level name, or you can also use a number. I'm going to use just the numbers here. So let's create the, the funnel, okay. new funnel. Okay, and I'm going to do here I, uh, from level uh, one to level two. Um, I just want to check how many people can go from one to two. Okay. So step one, click. Uh, I can do here on game over or the Unity scene is load. I'm going to do game over. Okay. Click uh, the Unity name. And is equal. So, or I can do actually, let's do unity scene load, okay, on the name, the level name, and is, uh, is equal. Let's say when the, we're going to go to level one, I want to know how many people went to level one. Step two, again then, unity scene, the level name, or the level number, I'm sorry, the level number. And we're going to equal do two. Now we can say add this funnel. Oh, you know, we can add more funnels, but then I can save here. Let's remove this one. Save. And then it will take a while eh, to process this one. And let me show you here the, the result here. If I go to the funnel analyzer in this case, from level one to level two, click. So we played it a little bit. And we can see that everybody played level one. And level two in this case. It's a simple game. We did it internally. But if you have a large game, like in, in your case, your games you made, but multiple, uh, multiple scenes, multiple levels, you can nicely see the drop off and where you have to act on. So you see how easy it is actually to integrate the basic analytics in Unity by just having copy pasting a number in your project settings, in the project ID. The integration of custom events is super simple by adding a simple script to the for you want to track. And if you want to do funnel effects, you just uh, funnel analyzer, you just go in this in the dashboard and click what you want. So super simple integration and it gives you lots of information and benefits to optimize your game while you don't have to work on the software creators all but just in a few clicks you have it integrated.